All right, First Chronicles chapter 16. We're going to go to this thing here. Um, name of the study is going to be, Shall Not Be Moved. That key phrase in the King James Bible here, what does it mean? You say, well, it means that the earth is stationary. We have geocentricity, and geocentricity proves the earth is flat. No, it does not. I mean, well, if you believe in geocentricity, I guess it would, but um, I'm not going to be pulling any punches with this whole thing because it's gone far enough. If you haven't seen the other video, please watch that one, why I'm not a flat earther. Um, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 29, we'll begin there. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, let it be not moved. Right there you go. Uh, no. I'm going to prove from the video, or from this from the scriptures today in this video um, that that has nothing to do with the earth not moving it's talking about established it's talking about it's a it's a english idiom i will not be moved get back into that here in a minute i will prove it um, let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let men say among the nations the lord reigneth let the sea roar and the fullness thereof let the fields rejoice and all that is therein um then shall the trees of the woods sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Um, I see a lot of emphasis on God there, and not so much emphasis on the earth. Um, what is the biggest chapter? It's actually a psalm, but what's the biggest one in the Bible? Uh, psalm 119. What's it about? The Word of God. I'll spend my time talking about this book here and defending particularly the King James Bible. All right, I will defend that. That's worthy of my time. That's worthy of my study. Reading all about the different manuscript evidence stuff and whatever else, I'll study that. I'll go over, back over the new versions and show the new versions and the corruption in them and whatever else. But the shape of the earth? Don't waste your time on that. But, oh, but you, you know, it's been proven that... Uh, you know, it, it's not moved. It doesn't move. The earth doesn't move. Psalm 93, verse 1. If the Bible is your standard, then what you'll do is you'll take a key phrase or a word and you'll say, okay, let me look at all the references to that. And none of these flat earthers do it with shall not be moved. It's a problem. Because you see, if they did, it would quickly disprove their heresy. That's why they don't do it. And that's why it's not of God. Because it's a purposeful cover-up. All right, so 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 29, well, verse 30, I think it is, is the one that you'll see on the flat earth map. You'll see it on this, this uh, book right here. It's been sent to me three times now. Uh, don't send any more, please. Right there, 1 First, First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 30. Proves that the earth doesn't move, which means it's geocentric, and then it means it's flat. Psalm 93, verse 1. The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty, the Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he hath girded himself, the world also is established that it cannot be moved. You say, well, see, right there, it's established. It's, it cannot be moved. It's, it's a flat disk. It doesn't move. Are you sure you want to hold to that? Psalm 10. Go back to Psalm 10. See, I'm not going to just pretend here and I won't give you the verses that are you know that are uh, that they use I'll give you both verses I'll, I'll give you all the scriptures see I'm honest see these guys guys like this right here they will write only certain verses and then they take them out of context and they they you know they'll take it and then they'll say okay here and they'll give you a false interpretation and then they build off the false interpretation and everything else has to tie into that first verse which they didn't even interpret correctly I don't do it that way. I'm going to give you the scriptures. And you need to follow along in your Bible. Don't just sit there and be entertained. Follow along in your King James Bible. This is your authority, the King James Bible. Not me and not some flat earth guy. All right, Psalm chapter 10, or Psalm 10, excuse me, verse 2 through 6. Um, the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the, de in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. 
His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Wow. I never knew that the wicked people are stable. They don't move. Well, there's a guy right out there. He's been out there for, I guess, three years now. Just stands there. He shall not be moved. <laughs> Wicked centricity, can we call it that, you know? Geocentricity, the earth isn't moved because it says it shall not be moved. You see? It's an English idiom. It is not describing the earth that the earth doesn't move. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. You heretic. Shut up, then. Oh, we'll, we'll see. I'm going to give you the scriptures that say the earth moves. Okay? I'll give you the scriptures. It's not just that I'm proving it's an English idiom. I'm going to actually give you the scriptures that says that the earth moves. So, study the scriptures. When you study the scriptures and somebody comes along and they give you one verse to prove something, say, wait a second, I better check and make sure that this guy isn't lying to me. I better make sure. Well, he has all these other arguments. I'm a Bible believer. I need to see from the scriptures. And it doesn't end there. Oh, it doesn't end there. Psalm 15 and verse 5 says here, He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. Okay. Uh, righteous necessity, <laughs> centricity, righteous centricity. It's an expression, brethren. Psalm 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Wow. David is centricity. <laughs> you see? You see how quickly their little thing falls apart here, the flat earthers? You've been deceived if you're a flat earther. It, because they all start with the same thing. 1 Chronicles 16.30. 1 Chronicles 16.30. The Bible says the world it will not be moved. It, it shall not be moved. That proves that it's stationary. Well, then everything that follows logically would have to be the same thing. I shall not be moved. Wow. Psalm 21, verse 7. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. King centricity. Well, there's a lot of centricities in here. Shall not be moved. You see, let me give you just a real quick little English lesson here, uh, because some people apparently don't understand plain English. Um, I shall not be moved. What does that mean? You know, I shall not be moved. Ooh, somebody hits me. Oh, I moved. That's not what it means. Okay? What it means is you're not going to be move, move me from my purpose in life. Somebody comes along and they say, hey, uh, Brian, you know that King James Bible? It's actually not God's word. It's just a translation. It's got errors in it. No, no. I shall not be moved from this book. You'll never move me. That doesn't mean, mean that my feet don't move. It doesn't mean that I don't walk places and go around and do things. The earth has a specific purpose. God knows exactly what he's going to do with the earth. And part of it is it's going to be moving. Okay? We'll get back to that scripture later. Okay? God knows. I, he created the earth and he has a specific purpose for the earth. He knows exactly what it is. And that purpose will not be moved. You see? You know, think about it. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. What's he referring to? This book you can count on. The earth is going to be removed. It's going to be destroyed eventually. God has a purpose for it. Oh, we have to worry about nuclear armaments because man could destroy the earth. Not before God. God says, hey, I'm going to destroy this earth. I'm going to be the one that burns this earth. Revelation chapter 20. The earth is not going to go anywhere. There will be no nuclear war and, oh, we are all just destroyed and mankind ceases to be. No. The purpose for the earth shall not be moved. That's what it's talking about. The earth shall not be moved. 
doesn't mean it's geocentric or whatever you want to say. It's nonsense. Psalm chapter 46, or Psalm 46. I keep saying chapter. Psalm 46. I mean, this, this issue, brethren, I'm, I'm angry about it. I'm very, I'm very mad about this issue because it's caused so much division and I'm sick and tired of it. I just thought, well, it'll go away. You know, people are into it right now and whatever. But it just, it's become this thing. There's probably Christians out there, professing Christians that probably have tattoos or something with flat earth or something, or they probably have it on their vehicles or, you know, maybe t-shirts walking around. Flat earth, talk to me about the earth being flat or something. I just become obsessed with it. And it drives me nuts because it's not true. Psalm 46, verse one through five. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, it will be someday, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, it will be someday, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river and streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. So now we have the city of God there. God shall help her, or she shall not be moved there. So New Jerusalem, you know, uh, centricity or whatever. You have to p compare Scripture with Scripture. But the, the earth will be removed? Hmm. Psalm 62, go to Psalm 62, verse 1 through 6. Psalm 62, verse 1 through 6. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Uh, David there, he's not going to be greatly moved. He'll be moved a little bit, I guess, maybe, I don't know. It's talking about his beliefs. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain all of you. As a bowing or bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. You know, I believe there's a lot of atheists right now that are into this flat earth thing, and they're just doing it to dupe Christians. You say, well, that's just a theory. No, actually, I could prove it. And if I have to come out with the information, I will come out with the information. There are, my wife is doing some research on this whole thing too. She's found atheists that are laughing about the flat earth thing, saying that they're duping Christians with it. What does it say there? They delight in lies, flat earth. They bless with their mouth. I'm a Christian. I got saved. But they curse inwardly. My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expe expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. It doesn't mean he's stationary, brethren. It doesn't mean he's just like that. You say, well, it said stable, though. The earth is stable. and things. Yeah, God, God created things, and he's, it's not going to be greatly moved. It's not going to be just destroyed and whatever else. There's stability there. You can know there's no... Oh, what a Russia and China. And, oh, what if, you know, there's, there's nuclear war coming and they have these horrible missiles and they can get us and we can't stop it. And Don't be greatly moved. There's stability there. Understand, you look at things and you say, yeah, no. We're not even in the time of Jacob's trouble yet, so I'm not worried about nuclear missiles. And if they do launch a few or whatever, it's not going to destroy the earth. It won't destroy that much. God won't let it. Why? Because God has a purpose that's set in stone for the earth. He knows exactly what he's going to do. Don't worry about it. Lost people worry about what's going to happen to the earth. Saved people don't. We already know what's going to happen to the earth. Remember that one. <clears throat> Psalm 96. Psalm 96 verses 10 through 13. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord, for he cometh uh, for He cometh to judge the earth. 
He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. There you have it again. It's established. There's, it's not moving from God's purpose. That's what it's talking about. Psalm 112. I, you know, I don't know if I want to study this much. I mean, this, going through a lot of verses of Scripture, you know, I just, I'd be better watching a bunch of YouTube videos to prove that the earth is flat and going through all this, you know. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 30 is all I need to see. I don't have to look up anything else in the Bible that says, shall not be moved or not be moved or whatever, do keyword searches and things. Lazy. That's how you get deceived, by the way. The false prophets um, count on that, on you not doing the study so that they can get you. Uh, Psalm 112, verse 6 through 10. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. God has already written the, the past, present, and future of the earth in here. Don't worry about it. That's what it's talking about. It's not going to be moved. He's not going to all of a sudden change his mind and say, well, I, I just let, you know, Russia and China and America just kind of nuke the whole planet, and that's, sorry about that. There will be no, you know, the millennial kingdom is canceled. You know, there's no time of Jacob's trouble. There's no catching up of the body of Christ. Just, you know, <laughs> not happening. Verse 8, his heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Just like to kind of put that in there as a reminder to wicked people that are watching. Proverbs chapter 12. And believe me, the, the real good stuff is yet to come in this study. I have some real good ones for you. If you believe that the earth... Uh, you say, well, yeah, okay, there's people that are, you know, can't be moved, but the earth, you know, I still believe it's geocentric and, and you know, and it can't be moved and everything. We'll see about that. Um, Proverbs chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that re hateth reproof is brutish. You better think about it. You've been deceived if you're a flat earther. You have been deceived. The Bible does not teach it. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a wicked, uh, a man of wickedness, wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. We have a purpose. God has written it out in his word. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, verse 18, 18 through 20, um, Isaiah 40, verse 18, to whom then will ye liken God or what likeness will ye compare unto him? The workman melteth a graven image and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold and casteth silver chains. Interesting because it's kind of a tie into the thing of the, um, the workman of the ax, he goes out. Jeremiah chapter 6, I think it is, talks, people say it's a Christmas tree. No, it's an idol. He goes out and he carves it, you know, and then he overlays it, he decks it with gold and silver, fastens it with nails that it moves not. All right, it's talking about a carved idol. Here you have it being overlaid with gold. It talks about the goldsmith spread it over with gold. That's gilding it. <clears throat> Verse 20, He that is so impoverished that he hath not no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. All right. That's one that's in context is actually talking about being nailed to the ground. And of course, verse 22, it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. All right. Um, you say, well, see, a circle is a flat plane and whatever else. Uh, a circle is also the circumference of a sphere. All right. And if you move any way, any direction from a sphere, you know, you see little children's books, my son's books, you know, and, and which object, you know, describe the object in, as a square, triangle, or circle. And they'll have the square is actually a box or something sitting there, a picture of a box. And what's this, this uh, shape? Square. You know, well, here's a ball, a beach ball. What is that? Circle. Any way you look at a circle it's, or a sphere, it's a circle. You can be from any angle, above it or to the side or whatever, it's going to be a circle. 
But if you have a flat earth, well, you have to be directly above it, you know, looking down at it, there's a circle. Well, if you move a little bit to the side, well, now it's kind of an oval. And then if you get down beside it, it's just a line. Kind of weird. Um, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Well, see, that proves it right there. Again, this is one of these things with the flat earth thing. It just drives me insane. Okay, I can go out at night and I can see the curvature of the firmament where we live. I can see it. It's curved. Now, if the earth was truly flat, there's no way I'd be able to see that curvature if it goes from one side of the earth to the other. It'd be too big. I wouldn't see, I'd probably just see a little bit of the flatter, maybe way up there or something like that. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, you know, it has to be a flat earth for, you know, every eye to see Jesus Christ when he comes back. Well, you're limiting God then. You know, if it's a sphere and God can appear and he can appear to everybody at the same time. Don't limit God by saying, oh no, it has to be flat so everybody can look up there or something. You don't know these things. See, again, we don't know. You can to debate that stuff and argue back and forth. You're wasting your time. And you look like ridiculous nonsense to the lost world out there. Don't fight over it. All right? Isaiah chapter 24. Isaiah 24, verse 18 through 23. I mean, if you want to fight about something, go down to some place where some pervert's dressed up like a woman and he wants to go in and use the, the women's bathroom or something. Go fight that. You want to be militant and get into a good fight and whatever and feel your blood pressure come up? Okay, go fight those perverts out there. Oh, they're having some sodomite rally. Go fight it. Fighting about the shape of the earth. You should be ashamed of yourself. I mean, I never wanted to do these studies. I was really hoping, like I said, that it would go away. But here I am. I have to say this. I don't want to keep getting into it, but I'm sure the little devilish, sensual, you know, earthly people are going to come along and, you didn't answer anything. And what about this? And what about that? And whatever. Isaiah 24, verse 18 through 23. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. No, no. It's, it's moveth not. Shall not be moved. That's talking about the purpose of the earth. It's not talking about the earth itself. The earth is moved exceedingly. Unless it's this way you know, or something. But then you have a contradiction. Because if you want to use 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 30 to say the earth doesn't move, here it says it moves exceedingly. You mean to tell me the flat earth system would actually cause the Bible to contradict itself? You see, I can look at this passage and I can say, yeah, not a problem. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 30 is talking about the purpose of the earth. It shall not be moved. That's what it's talking about. It's stable. God has plans for it. I don't have to worry about the earth being destroyed by man. There's stability there. The earth isn't going to be moved. Oh, carbon footprint and all this. No, no, the earth isn't going to be moved. It moveth not. Don't worry about it. God has it all figured out. But this passage right here says, um, the earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. But it gets worse. You say it just means an earthquake. Right? Verse 20. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. Huh. Keep reading here. Verse 20. Um, 21, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited, which I believe is down in the heart of the earth. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. Hmm kind of an interesting thing there. Well, this, what, what about this? What, you know, brethren, I can tell you that I can read that passage and I don't understand everything. 
you see, I don't have a pride problem where I think I understand it all and I just know. Well, of course, I understand what it means. There's a lot of stuff about the book I don't understand. But you see, if I'm being told by flat earthers that the earth doesn't move, it's stable, it's got foundations under it and it never moves, um, and yet over here it says it moves exceedingly and it's reeling to and fro like a drunkard, you know, like that, uh, how do you get a flat plane to reel to and fro, you know? And then you have a contradiction, like I said. You say, well, it, okay, it could move, it could kind of like that, but you said earlier it doesn't move. What about the foundations? What about the foundations, Brian? You just, you know, it has to have these pillars underneath it and whatever else. It has to have that. I don't know what that is. Don't act like you know what it is. See? See, that's the problem here. Well, we know for sure. We know what it looks like. Have you seen it? No. Intruding into those things which they have not seen. Vainly puffed up by their fleshly mind. Do you see how you've fallen for it? You're intruding into things that you haven't seen. Intruding into things that the Bible doesn't is not clear on. Hey, go to Jerusalem. You know, the, the two witnesses in the future, they're, they're killed, they're martyred for Jesus Christ, you know, for, the, for Jesus and the, the word, testimony of Jesus and the word of God. You know, they keep the commandments and things in that time period there. But the two witnesses are killed in the streets of that great city where also our Lord was just called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where's the city at? Well, we don't really know. We can't really get any pictures of it. No, you can go there. Okay? Had a brother. Got this from over in Jerusalem. He went on a trip over there. This temple thing. Or not temple, the uh, tomb or whatever. And you go through there. and It's, it's postcards, you know. And, and you go through there like that. And this is the tomb that they think where Jesus was buried. It's empty. He's not there. Uh, there you go, from Israel. I don't have to have faith that Israel exists, right? that Jerusalem exists. There's proof. People go there. Well, we know that there's pillars, and they, they look like this, and we, we draw these artist renditions. You know, you bunch of stinking hypocrites in this flat earth movement, you'll rail on, on NASA. They make computer generated images. Their images of space are fake. It's all computer generated images. What about you? Huh? What is this? Is this real? That's right. It's a drawing. Hypocrite. Railing on NASA for their drawings in the blue marble earth and all this other. And yet you rely on your drawings too. And on some idiot from the 1800s that drew a square earth with a, you know, looks like a, like the thing that they do in the gambling where a little ball goes around, rolls. I don't even know what the thing's called. I don't go to casinos. You know? Angels, winged female angels and things. Telling me about CGI created, uh, I mean, it wasn't CGI, the guy drew it. But tell me about fantasy and things. What's the foundations of the earth? Well, we'll, we'll draw pillars and we'll, we'll draw all these other things. You don't know what it is. Such hypocrisy in that movement. Jeremiah chapter 49. Well, Brian, we're going to have to part company with you. We can't support your ministry. Uh, happened before. It'll happen again fall apart. Don't take my advice. You know more than I do. You'll just go out and preach the flat earth gospel to all that listen and whatever else. And yeah, whatever. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 20 through 21. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord. Not. Okay. Hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom and his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. At the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Uh, hold on there. Um, the earth shall not be moved. The earth is moved. Verse 21. Does your Bible contradict? Mine doesn't. 
Um, <clears throat> you see, I can look at that and it says the earth shall not be moved. The earth is moved. The earth shall not be moved in its purpose. It's established. God knows what he's doing. There's stability there. Don't worry about it. But the earth will be moved someday. The earth is moved. There's no contradiction. But if you're a flat earther that has to prove geocentricity first to build on your, you put that there and then you have your little foundation, geocentric foundation, then you build flat earth on top of that. What do you do with that? The earth is not moved. Or excuse me, the earth is moved. The earth is moved. Your Bible contradicts if you're a flat earther. Ouch. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 45 through 46. You know, it's a beautiful thing to get back in fellowship with the Lord after you've been deceived. Push the pause button here for a minute on the sermon. Get down on your knees and you humble yourself. I've been teaching that thing for years, Lord. I'm so sorry. I should have looked into it better. Lord, please forgive me for spreading lies. I've done it. I've had to do it. A couple times I've had people confront me on things and I look at the scriptures and I, it says that. Uh, and I think, I have to rescue my, myself. I could look bad here. It doesn't look too good for me. So what? It's about this book. Somebody shoots me in the head. Oh no, God's man is gone. Oh, what can we do without God's man? <laughs> you have the Bible, don't you? But it just won't be the same without Brian. He, he was our hero. He was our leader. <laughs> it's about the Bible, brethren. It's not about me. And if you can see from the scriptures that you're wrong, and you look at the scriptures and you say, yeah, it says it's the, the earth is moved. Huh. Well, I've been contradicting the scriptures with my beliefs that the earth is flat and it doesn't move. Lord, I'm sorry. Humble yourself. Or continue in your pride and see where that gets you. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 45 through 46. Therefore hear thee the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Babylon and his purposes that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Got his purposes against the land? Yeah, he has it figured out, you see. And those purposes aren't going to be moved. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their, their habitation desolate with them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved. The earth is moved, and the cry is heard among the nations. You say, well, okay, maybe it's just talking about the, the situation. Maybe we're back to the English idiom again, Brian. Hmm? You ever think about that? You ever think about it? Uh, yes, I have thought about it, actually, but um, I'm going to show you what the reference is there. Look at the verse again, verse 46, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 46. At the noise of the ta taking of Babylon... The earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. All right. Revelation chapter 16. It's describing a future event. Revelation chapter 16, beginning in verse 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices. The cries heard, remember? And thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Hmm. That's what it's talking about. The earth has moved. I actually saw a thing the one time that there are geologists that say that there could be a mega earthquake someday. 
that it'd be a super earthquake and it would actually shake the earth and the earth would actually rotate out of its axis or whatever else. And it would cause massive disruption and seasons and it would just be catastrophic. Hmm. I wonder where they got that idea from. Right there. Prophesied in the Old Testament. That prophecy is not going to move. It's going to happen. Well, maybe if we can get the, the U.S. Geological Survey and we can put in special monitors and we can kind of, maybe we can set off detonations and things. I, was, I remember I was flying someplace. I think it was Alaska when I went up there to see my brother many years ago. And they had this on-flight, you know, movie thing. And I was not paying attention to it. I was just newly saved, but I was, I don't want anything to do with Hollywood. And I, I looked at it and I was thinking, what are they saying in that movie? And I put my headphone things on. I was looking at it. It was a movie. I don't even know what the thing was called, but it was about this thing where they, the, uh, they, you were using weather weapons, you know, harp towers and whatever else, and, uh, and how that they used them too much. And now they're causing the earth to wobble a little bit. And the only way we can get this thing to stop and we can save the earth for the future is they had to tunnel down into the heart of the earth, down into where the, the fire was at, you know. So they had this special thing that would get down in there and, and then they could set off a little nuclear bomb down in there and it would, you know, shake the earth and the earth would get back on course again. <laughs> you know, uh, what are they trying to do? They know what the Bible says about their future. And they're saying, see, if maybe we could just make a movie and maybe we could come together and, and get this as an idea out there. We'll just put it out there for people to start thinking about. Maybe we could undo the prophecies of the book of Revelation. No, you can't. You know why? Because the prophecies of this book shall not be moved. You're not going to move what's written, what's prophesied in here. A lot of people, just, people are so nuts. You get these lost people and they say, I think actually that the, the Bible, the King James Bible was written by the Illuminati or something because it's the Illuminati playbook. Because things are coming to pass and the, the Illuminati is helping to fulfill scripture. So, you know, well, that's real smart because the scripture, you know, prophesies the destruction of all the wealthy men. They're hiding in the rocks and the, and the dens and the caves and things calling for the rocks to fall upon them. Not hiding in the rocks, but I'm saying, you know, why would they write a book that prophesies their own destruction? Well, they'll follow it up to that point and then they'll stop. <laughs> no. Um, crazy. Psalm 68. The Bible is so true, it shocks people. I'm a truther. They come in, you know, and I'm a truther, and all this other stuff. And then they get into all these kooky things that, that draws them away and they go to hell when they die because they never come to the Lord as a sinner. I better say that one more time. They never come to the Lord as a sinner. I'm sorry, seeking for truth. Oh, I want the light. Oh, what do you want now? More light. You know, okay, come on into the Masonic Lodge. They're looking for light. They're looking for truth, aren't they? They want their connections, don't they? Start getting into all this Gnostic stuff and whatever else will just mess you up, send you right to hell. Because you aren't coming to the Lord under His conditions. Broken, contrite spirit. Humble yourself. Not exalt yourself because now you know the real shape of the earth. <laughs> Psalm 68, verse 7 through 8. O God, when thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, Selah, the earth shook. The heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Hmm. No, Brother Brian, the, uh, the earth doesn't move. Well, then you're causing the Bible to contradict. And you have a problem. Psalm 99. Psalm 99, verse 1. The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims, let the earth be Moved. Uh. <laughs> Just study it. Okay? That's all you have to do. First Chronicles 16, verse 30. Wow. One verse of Scripture, and I can base my entire future on one verse of Scripture. I don't want to do a word study here and actually see what this phrase means. You know? Um, 
turn now to Hebrews chapter 13. This will be where we end this study. Um, you know, there's been a couple times I've had some really good sermons. I mean, I'm talking. This sermon is going to be the best one I've ever done. And I go to the Bible and the Lord just destroys my idea. <laughs> I go to the scriptures and I think, okay, I know it says this. I know it said. I remember, that I, I think that there was a verse and it says this thing. And I, I know, I know, and it's, this is going to really prove my point. And I go through and I, oh, no, it, there's the verse right there. And it, it doesn't say what I wanted it to say. This was really going to be a good sermon. I was really going to prove something good. Sermon notes, rip them up, throw them in the trash. You can't go to the Word of God and just cherry pick one verse and say, boom. And now I'm going to build this whole big thing off of it. And that's precisely what these flat earth guys do. They build everything off of 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 30. And you look it up and you say, wait a second. Shall not be moved is not talking about it geocentricity. It's not talking about that at all. But what's the problem? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9. Be not carried away, excuse me, about with divers and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Um, you know what babies like to do? I had a baby once, my little boy, and um, he'd get to the point where uh, at first he was okay with just nursing, you know, and everything else. Um, but then he started getting to the point where he kind of liked the smell of meat. And I remember uh, I'd be making bacon or some other, you know, good meat like that and and frying it up and things. And, and of course, you can eat bacon. Don't, you know, there's no prohibition against bacon in the New Testament, so don't give me hassle on that. <laughs> Um, I've been over that before, so I don't need to hear it. Um, you don't want to eat bacon, then don't eat bacon. Whatever, make up your own mind. Every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If you want the scripture. I've been making bacon, bacon, and, and he would, he'd be on the floor playing with his toys and he'd start to smell that bacon. And he'd go, eh, 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 like this, but way before he could talk. You know, just a little over a year old. Eh, eh, eh. I remember the one time I got a piece of bacon and it made sure it was cool, put it on my lip and everything, made sure it was cool. And I put it down to his, just let him kind of put it in his mouth. And I didn't let him take a bite of it. He didn't even have teeth at the time. And his eyes got big and I, whoop, and I took it out of his mouth. I didn't want him to bite it because he wouldn't know how to chew it and swallow it. Ah, you know, he, he wanted, no, I want that back. And uh, a lot of Christians are like that. They'll get some kind of a real heavy meat doctrine when they haven't even had the milk of the word and they say no i just want milk or meat all the time i want to get into all this real deep stuff and things and whatever and it's exciting to think about that there's this huge conspiracy that they're covering it up nasa's covering it up and the air force covers it up and the navy covers it up and everybody's covering up this truth they're, the earth is actually flat wow there's an ice wall out there and, and everywhere you go no matter where you go you know, I mean, right there, there's a thin spot right there. I don't know why that area is thin. There's other areas that's thicker here, but I don't know why this area here is, is thin of the ice wall. See, it's thin there. I don't know why, you know, I mean, it's a drawing, you know, we'll attack NASA, like I said earlier, for CGI, but this is, this is accurate. Okay, we know, we know for sure. That's what it looks like. Um, but all oh, this conspiracy, and, oh, oh, they, you know what you're trying to do, little baby? You're trying to establish yourself with milk, or with meat and not milk. You know, as soon as I heard about this flat earth thing years ago, I just thought, really? The earth is flat? Okay. Um, yeah, not in there, not in there, not in there. Um, yeah. KJV, sword searcher. Flat earth. No results. Hmm. Earth is flat. No results. Flat. I don't even know if the word flat's in the Bible. It's not in there. There's nothing about the flat earth. Huh. Um, 
I remember Paul and Barnabas, they fought at that one time because I think Barnabas was flat earth and Paul was, no, Barnabas was, he was sphere earth and, and Paul was flat earth. No, they didn't fight about it. Um, we're not supposed to fight about that stuff. And you know what happens if you do fight about it? You get carried about with divers and strange doctrines and they don't profit you. Um, brethren, I'm just going to tell you this going forward. You won't sway me from my position. I'm not going to be a militant sphere earther guy and promote NASA and whatever and say, you know, I don't even care. <laughs> You're not going to hear me making sermon after sermon after sermon on proving the earth is a sphere or something. And you have to believe the earth, you know, spherical earth, whatever. I want to preach about Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. And I want to live on the milk of the word. And I'm going to throw in some meat occasionally. Right now, great blessing in our lives. We have a farm that sells us raw milk and meat. And you know what I buy more of? Milk. I do. I like milk. I like meat too. But uh, if I had to take the choice between the two, um, probably the milk. If I have to take the choice between milk and meat from this book, I'll take the milk. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I like that. I haven't outgrown that yet. A child, little child song or whatever. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Well, <clears throat> Papyrus Fragment 66, P66, has the particular reading in it. And uh, the Johannine comma is not found in some of the early manuscripts. It's not in Vaticanus or Vaticanus. I love, you could say it the better, the scholarly way. My IQ just went up quite a bit there by saying Vaticanus instead of Vaticanus. Uh, or, you know, Sinaiticus or Sinaiticus. Or, uh, there's different ways that these guys come out and they say it. And it, you're special if you say it a certain way. <laughs> You know, um, and I'll just, you know, study these things here and whatever. I don't want to be some buffoon that just says, the Bible tells me so. If it's good enough for Paul, it's good enough for me. I don't want to be a, such an imbecile like that. I'll be an imbecile like that. The Bible tells me so. Does the Bible tell me so that the earth is flat in those words? No. So does the Bible say it's a sphere? No. <laughs> That's why I don't mess with it. That's why I don't care. If you do care, if it's a big issue and you're just going to sign this ministry off, just cross it off, say, then there's a false prophet, go join the other ranks, you know, at least make a channel or something and attack me. That way I get more attention. You know, that's what people say about me. So there you go. You know, there's not enough attacks right now on me. I'm kind of getting a little lonely here. <laughs> so, brethren... Learn from me, okay? Learn from what goes on. Learn from the attacks that come against me because they're going to come to you as well. If you stand for this book, you will be called an ignoramus and everything else. And you're going to meet people and they're going to be very well-meaning, but they're getting carried away, carried about with divers and strange doctrines. And the flat earth thing is a divers and strange doctrine. You can't just go to the Bible and say, a little child, you know, can open this book and look through it. I don't see anything about flat earth in here. Well, no, because you have to go, <clears throat> we have the Bible and our books. Here. <sighs> that is going to be it. I've gone off on this subject for long enough. Um, quite frankly, I don't want to do one more video on this. I want to get back to the things that actually matter. Um, telling people Bible doctrine, things that will actually point them to Jesus Christ. Um, Things that are clearly written in the scriptures. Tell people about the mark of the beast system that's being set up as we speak with the central bank digital currencies. Tell people about the wars that are coming. The wars and rumors of wars. I have on my window over here a banner. Signs of the last days. Wars and rumors of wars. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes. And then I say all these are the beginning of SARS and I give the scripture references down there. King James Bible. I'm not going to put a thing out there. The earth was flat. <laughs> 
where's the scripture on that? Well, you kind of have to infer some things and you kind of have to don't mess with it. So if you're going to leave the ministry, then leave the ministry. You want to call me lost, call me lost, go away. But if you're truly saved, I pray that you repent of this thing and you realize that you were just suckered into something very deceitful. Uh, that is going to be it. What more can I say? Please pray about it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Um, get busy for the Lord.